Okay, folks, so um, I made a brief video to kind of walk through discussion posts and the rubric for that. So I also wanted to make the reading journal assignment video um, just because we are starting that this week. So if you look at the materials, it does say that we'll start this in week two and we are in week two. So um, I want to explain that and go over all the elements in the template. Um, again, these are um, items that will be posted in that content area of D2L where all the important documents for the class are located. So to start us off, um, it's a longer document, so I'm not going to just sit and read it to you. Um, how boring. Um, so take some time to really look over it yourself when you have a moment, um, especially as you start the process of creating your reading journal. Go over and review this, right? It's just going to be important to, again, to receive the best grade possible, you want to make sure that you're hitting all of those expectations, okay? So I've pulled up the document that goes over the assignment, um, and I just offered kind of an explanation here just so that you have an idea of why are we doing this, what's the purpose, um, in addition to the requirements, right? Um, so really and truly the goal of this assignment is to kind of push us to actively engage as readers. So oftentimes when we read, um, especially for school, we just kind of have that mentality of, um, you know, I just need to finish. I just need to get through this. Um, and so oftentimes we'll have kind of a, a list of the reading we have to do in one class and another, and we just want to cross those things off. Um, and sometimes that means we're not really paying attention to what we're reading. Some of you have probably had this, all of you have probably had the experience where you read and you're getting through a whole page, but you really don't recall what was on that page or in that last paragraph. Um, our minds tend to wander. We have really short attention spans, especially now when we can be so distracted by our phones or TV or, you know, the things that we want to do. We want to be outside, you know, especially now. Um, so this assignment is kind of pushing us to engage because the readings that we have are really relevant. They're connected to um, our writing and the way we think about our writing and also our overall topic, which I'll get to in just a second. OK, so. Um, this is really a tool that pushes, and I say maybe forces us to pay attention, um, but it is really worthwhile. Okay, so beginning in week two, you're going to start this to actively engage and show that critical thinking. Okay, um, so I do note that, you know, many of our readings are going to be about writing because in order to develop our writing skills, we need to kind of understand what, what it is we're thinking and what we're doing when we're writing. So this is really helpful. Um, but then some of the things that we read are going to cover the course theme and topic, which for this semester will be food. I've done this in various semesters just because food is kind of universal in a lot of ways. Um, it's a way for us to connect. It's a way for us to learn from one another. Um, and it's also something that's really nostalgic. A lot of us can remember um, a topic or food related uh, event in our lives. But food just becomes kind of a useful topic for us to connect and write about. OK, so food is the topic. And like I said, it's a way to kind of learn about the impact of food from personal, cultural and communal perspectives. Um, and it will make sense as we move through the different weeks. Right. So I say, you know, start by reading the text in whatever way works for you. So I want you to really as the weeks progress, think about your reading habits. Um, do you need a quiet space to sit and read so you can focus? Are you somebody who needs a really comfortable chair or couch or location of some sort? Or is being that comfortable going to put you to sleep? Um, do you need a little bit of background noise? Are you kind of a person who you can work at, you know, a busy Starbucks just because that background noise you can ignore, um, but it's something. So think about what you need as a reader. And sometimes that changes. I used to be a person who I needed to go to a coffee shop and have some of that noise. Um, and then I started to realize that I was people watching way more than I was reading or writing. So I had to kind of change my location and think of that. Right now, we may be pretty limited for locations just based on the pandemic and everything that's going on. Uh, but in your own space, maybe find what's going to work for you when it comes to noise, when it comes to lighting, when it comes to comfort levels. Um, do the best you can. Some of us are working with lots of family members or kids or, you know, whatever the case may be, but try try to find that that space, that time of day that's going to be the best. OK, um, I put take written notes, use post-its, underline or highlight. And I say do something to make sure you're paying attention. Right. 
So now I'm getting into the format. So for each reading, you're going to create an entry in a Word document. So I put, you know, here in Word, please make sure that you're using Word, whether it's in Google Docs or whatever, you can save as a Word document. Um, and I put, you know, I'm going to provide a template. And please use it. There's no reason for you to go in and set up an MLA formatted document on your own because it takes several steps. The way that Word defaults and Google Docs and anything you might use, you have several steps you need to go go through in order to make it MLA ready. With the spacing, with the font, with the font size, just use the template, right? Okay. So for each entry, you're going to include the text title and the author's name. Um, I've highlighted or I've bolded those so that you make sure to include them. And I put for our course text, just worry about our main course text editor, who is Andrea Lunsford. You can give her credit. Um, there are going to be different authors and editors for each of the different sections, but for right now, I'm not worried about that. Just use Lunsford as the person. Um, for MLA formatting, we have to put the text title in quotation marks. That's, you know, because we're working with book chapters or article titles. Always, always, always differentiate those titles from your regular text and writing by using the quotation marks. Um, and that's for, again, book chapters or articles, okay? So you also need to include a summary, right? Just breaking down the main ideas, you know, for that particular reading and a response. So a summary is good, you know, but summary is something that we've probably worked with um, quite a bit in previous, you know, schooling, whether it's middle school, high school, whatever. Um, it is that main point or main points that the author is trying to make. So each book chapter, there are going to be points that the author is trying to make. In every article, there are different points, right? So we wanna make sure that we're honing in on those things. Um, and some of the work we do with summarizing is limiting the information. We read all of this stuff, but what are those main ideas? Just the facts, right? Um, so the summary is not your opinion. It's not anything but those author's main ideas, okay? So after the summary, that's when you come in. That's when I want a response. And I want you to think about, you know, what's the point? For this section, you should be technical. So um, I'm sorry, I'm moving into the wrong area here. So the technical part is for the summary, right? What's the point? Who is the audience? That's everything that's based with summary in mind. And then in the second paragraph, this is where we get into a response, right? An idea or a key concept that you want to examine more deeply. So think about as you read, what is something interesting? What is something that sparks your interest or something that goes against your expectations. So dig into that a little bit. So it not only shows that you read, but shows that you're really thinking about what you're reading. Okay. So finally, you're going to choose a quote. Okay. So we have summary response and you choose a quote. You want to follow MLA guidelines, which just means using those quotation marks, making sure you are accurately uh, phrasing the quote it is word for word exactly as it appears on the page. Use in-text citation format. There is an example below, so if you're not familiar with that, that's okay. Um, but also with the quote, you want to then explain its relevance, right? So why is this important? Why is this quote something that is useful? I really recommend that for the quote, you're choosing something that's written by the author. You'll note that in our articles and in our book chapters, uh, because people are doing you know, their due diligence, they are showing that they've researched, they're not just pulling their ideas from wherever, they're gonna be quoting other people, right? That's that's what academic writing is, that's what we will do throughout the semester, um, but really focusing on what the original author, so Andrea Lunsford, our editor for our course text, and then different authors for the articles, their quotes are gonna be the most relevant and useful, so it's just something to think about and focus on. Okay, um, so if you scroll down, I do have the grading rubric, which is really pretty self-explanatory, but, you know, for the summary, for the response, for the quote, we want to, again, be in this range, A or high B. You know, your writing reveals the depth of understanding, your response reveals critical thinking, and the quote is present, properly cited, accurate, and then your explanation is clear. Right, and the further we move away from these expectations, the more we get into those other grades. Okay, I want to scroll down again because that's where we get to an example. Right, this is not the template, this is just kind of an example. It is formatted in MLA, formatting with spacing and font and all of that. Um, it has this title, Reading Journal. We're going to start in week two. 
Okay, so week two to, oh, off the top of my head, maybe week four or five. Forgive me all, I can't remember at this moment, but it's okay. So I have the title here. What is academic writing? This should be a familiar title. This is what we're reading. Um, it is in quotation marks. So that notes to me as somebody who understands MLA, oh, this is a book chapter. Or, oh, this is an article, right? And I'm also including and giving credit to the author. So the author for this article is Irvin. So I'm including Irvin's name here. The summary is going to go here, and I just started off generically. Uh, Irvin's goal in this article is to identify or, or you know, think of Irvin's um, main idea or thesis or argument, you know, just start off that way. And y'all, something to remember that is going to become more and more important as the weeks progress, give the author credit, especially when you're summarizing their work. And to do this, it's very simple. Just start every sentence with the author's last name or a gender pronoun. It may become apparent what gender pronoun the author prefers. You can always make some assumptions, um, or you can say something generic like the author. So Irvin argues this, the author then notes, you know, I'm starting these sentences, the more you reflect back and use the author's name or identify that these ideas are not yours, the clearer it will become in your mind, like these are somebody else's ideas, and in your reader's mind. So in my mind, I'm not going to confuse your ideas with Irvin's because you are clearly giving Irvin that credit in each sentence for the summary. Okay, so to end, Irvin explains, so I'm just offering two paragraphs. I just have spaces here because this is work for you to do, right? And then there's a response, right? So I've offered just a general response, you know, based on my reading of Irvin. Um, and this is where you come in. You can use that first person. That's okay. Um, really show that you've engaged with one of the ideas that is present. And then I have a quote here. I have quotation marks. You'll note that after the quotation marks, there's a space and then the parentheses. I've included the author's last name and the page number. That is MLA, and I put a little explanation here that's kind of in a blue font. So when you have some time, take a look. Um, I do want to stop the video for just a second because um, starting now we're going to work on participation quizzes, which basically is you showing that you watch the videos and that you've done the work. Um, so sometimes I'm going to throw a random word into a video. So this week's random word is, I'm randomly pulling something, strawberry. So just remember that because in quizzes some of this information is going to come back. Okay, strawberry is the word for this video. Okay, so going back, um, I have a little explanation here. This quote really summarizes what we need to know about college writing, da da da. You know, include either a line or a space or, if, you know, a few spaces between entries. And this becomes more important when um, you get to that second reading that you're going to include in your reading journal. So I'm going to briefly pull up the template. This is available on D2L where all the documents are. And this is for you to fill out. Take this, put your name there. We are in English 1301. I've already put my information here and then you just put the due date. And then you go in and fill in week two to week, I can't remember. You want to double click up here and put your last name in this area. That is MLA. It's grayed out so that you can't just easily change it. You have to double click to get in that area and then double click to get out, okay? Insert the title and author here. Remember to use those quotation marks and then just start. Just if, you know, uh, Irvin notes that, you know, do your paragraphs for the summary, do your paragraphs for the response, offer your quote and explanation. I've put a line in here and then you'll start the next reading, right? Maybe it's a reading from our course text or it's another article. It just depends on the week. But you want to do one of these entries for every single reading that we do. Um, if by chance I, you know, I don't assign one of the readings to be included, I will definitely let you know. But you should move on from this week on including every single reading in this document. It's one document that you will save and eventually upload in the assignments area of D2L, which I will walk through when that comes, right? All right, so if you have any questions, post in that Q&A area of our discussion boards, or you can always shoot me an email. Okay, good luck.